Do we absorb chemical toxins from body lotions? Unfortunately, I believe we do. I'm going to give you three examples of very common body lotions and uh, explain to you why I think we should not use these anymore and instead go to something much more simple and less toxic. So I picked up three very random common uh, body lotions at CVS and just to show you quickly what's in them. So let's start with Nivea. I've used that for a very long time. So when you focus in, first of all, you see mineral oil, and that's certainly not a very good thing to put in your skin. Mineral oil can cause many issues. It's not a great oil that we should absorb. And then some of these chemicals, I don't even know what they do, to be honest with you. Isohexadecane, glycerin, okay, fine, that's also a moisturizer. If that's good for you or not, hard to tell. Isopropyl palmitate, petrolatum, petrolatum, not good. PEG40, sorbitin, periosterate, I can't even pronounce these. Anyway, you see a lot of um, chemicals, and then you have a few things that are sound fine, like you know almond oil, fine. Um, magnesium fragrance, you know. So a bunch of stuff in there that I do not want to absorb through the skin, because we do absorb most of these things through our skin. So that's that one. Gold bond, also a very common one. If you see the list here, it's insane how much stuff is in there. Actually, let's see if we can get this into focus. Again, uh, glycerin, hydroxyethylurea, dimethicone. Again, and then you have some coconut oil, which is fine. And I'm going to get to that because that's actually what uh, I believe we should be using. Jojoba esters, whatever that means. Uh, and so on, so on. So, you know, petrolatum is in there as well, alcohol. And you see this, is like 40 ingredients, right? including fragrance and uh, coloring and, and whatnot. That doesn't sound very healthy. And again, remember, the skin absorbs a lot. Uh, Eucerin, this is a bit of more, they market themselves a bit more as a uh, almost medical uh, ointment. But even there, when you look at it, mineral oil, not good. And then again, octododecanol, so on, so on, so on. Some triglycerides, which is probably just a normal fat, fine. Isopropyl palmitate, um, hydrogenated castor oil. I don't think you want that on your skin either. Alcohols, and so on and so on and so on. So all these things I don't think we should put on our skin. The other thing is, as you notice, all these uh, body lotions come in plastic bottles. And I talked about that before. So the plastic certainly contains bisphenols and phthalates, and they do leak into the oils in there. These are, these are lotions, they're very fatty and you're gonna have those chemicals in there as well, and they do get absorbed through the skin as well. So you're putting a bunch of stuff in your skin that you don't necessarily want to have in your body. So there are many chemicals in these lotions, and they're at least questionable. And then a lot of times they use mineral oil, which is a petroleum product, as their main moisturizing ingredient, and that certainly has been linked to cancers. So all these things we don't want on our skin. Um, the skin absorbs many toxins and, and medications as well very well. And that can be an issue. It's used in medicine, for example, when we have uh, medications such as fentanyl. Fentanyl is a painkiller. It's an opiate, like morphine, but a lot more potent. And we give it as a patch on the skin. It gets absorbed through the skin uh, to then you know, have an analgesic, a, a pain relieving effect. And it's very dangerous. People overdose on fentanyl all the time. A lot of fentanyl is now circulating in the black market. And it's a very, very, very dangerous uh, opiate that sometimes people take way too much of and then they can have issues with their breathing and they can die of asphyxiation. And besides the uh, mineral oil and all these ingredients that are at least, as I said, questionable, also these um, uh, bottles, are, you know, these are plastic bottles. So these are oils or fatty substances packaged in plastic. And I talked in a couple of other videos about this, about the risks of exposing ourselves to toxins from plastic, mostly in contact with food. Talked about water bottles, talked about uh, food packaging. Mm -hmm. And especially fatty substances, they leak a lot of these phthalates and bisphenols into the um, uh, fatty substance inside. And then we ingest it, or in the case of lotions, we absorb it through the skin. So they certainly get into our body. And I'm gonna link a couple of studies that show that we absorb these phthalates and uh, bisphenols very well through our skin. So they do become systemic. They, they do enter our bloodstream. And that is a big issue when you think about moisturizers. You, you put them on in the morning after you take a shower and they're on your body all day long. So you really absorb whatever is in there because it stays on your skin. Now, people can argue, well, shampoos and, and those products are also in plastic bottles. That's true. And they, and they might have some leakage of these chemicals in there. But keep in mind, 
the shampoo you wash off right away. You rinse it off. It's a very, very brief contact with your body. I don't think that's a huge uh, uh, risk, at least right now with everything uh, I've seen. I don't think it's a big issue. But a body lotion, certainly, that stays on your body all day long. So again, this is a much bigger exposure. We do it very regularly. And uh, besides the horrible ingredients in there, you have the leakage of these uh, chemicals from plastics in there, the phthalates and the bisphenols. So all in all, we are continuously, you know, every day uh, poisoning ourselves using these uh, lotions. So I think we should not use these at all and simplify. Because when you look at it, some of these ingredients I can identify, you know, for example, some of them have coconut oil in them. And that's a great moisturizer. Now, coconut oil has been around for, for thousands of years. You know, people have used it and it's, a, it's very safe. It's very natural. And um, most people don't have any bad reaction to it. As with anything, when you try out a new oil or moisturizer, always use a small amount on your skin first and see how you respond to that. So coconut oil in a glass jar, and again, that's important because obviously uh, the packaging in glass is, is crucial. Here, no plastics, no phthalates, no bisphenols. Um, and then just use things that have one ingredient and the ingredient should be coconut oil. Uh, some of them are more refined or less refined. It just means like how much of the other um, fibers and stuff is still in there. Um, but in general, if it says coconut oil and it's in a glass jar, you're good to go. So we use it for whole family. I always, I mentioned this in, in other videos. When I go grocery shopping, I get uh, two jars. One is uh, for cooking sometimes. You know, I use some coconut oil for certain dishes. And the other one we keep in the bathroom for the whole family as a body moisturizer after you step out of the shower. Now, I think it's safe enough to use on the face. However, it is a bit oily and uh, some people prefer to use different lotions for their face. I think that's fine. You know, it's a fairly small area and then you can kind of uh, determine what works better there. But in general, coconut oil, again, very well tolerated. It has a very small, a very mild SPF even. It's an SPF of like one. It's like it filters out about 20% of the uh, UVA and UVB radiation. And I'm going to talk in another video because we are kind of a bit too freaked out about exposing ourselves to sunlight. And it's one thing that we should be doing a bit more in a safe way. But that's kind of a longer aside for another video. But coconut oil, again, uh, works very well for most people. It's easy um, to apply and it's very safe. And you can make your own sunscreen. And that's another thing as summer comes up now. Um, if we use a sunscreen, which I think is important to do specifically for, for children, we know that sunburns uh, in a younger age, under age 18, are highly linked to getting melanoma in a, in a, at a later age. Um, sun exposure, uh, so you're having a, a frequent sun exposure, is not so much linked to melanoma, but can be linked to squamous cell carcinoma and basal cell carcinoma. And those are not as dangerous. Um, they're much you know, less likely um, to have the same impact as a melanoma would have. However, they're also dangerous. And I'm going to talk in another video about specifically uh, those kinds of issues. Um, but what you can do is, and I'm going to show this in a separate video, you can mix um, just a bit of uh, uh, zinc oxide in, the, in, in there. And the zinc oxide you can buy, you get this non-nano grade uh, zinc oxide. You can buy these things on, on Amazon or, or or anywhere and that is actually a physical sunblock and you can mix it in with your coconut oil in a certain ratio and make your own sunscreen because again for sunscreens the same thing they come in plastic bottles and even if they're the uh, good ones that that i like which would be zinc oxide or titanium dioxide um, the base of it still has a lot of chemicals and the reason for that is you know to make it easy to apply to give it some preservative function and so on but again, you, you're rubbing chemicals on your skin, even if it's just on your, on, on your sunscreen, and they're sitting in plastic bottles. So I think it's always better to make these things on your own. So again, coconut oil, I think is great. Um, it's easy to use, uh, it's cheap. You can kick out all your other moisturizers and just go with that, and you will absorb a lot less, a lot less toxins. Because remember, a lot of toxins come in through your skin. They do through skin and to your body. They go into your bloodstream, they go all over your body. So this is a, a, a huge thing where we can detox ourselves from really bad compounds on a day-to-day -day basis.